Welcome to Glossika intro series. In this series, you will learn the basics of a language. And in today's video, we will talk about the Turkish language. The Turkish alphabet is very similar to English alphabet. Most of the letters are almost the same except these few letters. What makes Turkish language easy to learn is that the Turkish language is very systematic and very consistent and the writing system is also very phonetic. That means you can look at the written word and know how to pronounce it right away. Turkish is an agglutinative language. Agglutinative, meaning glue in Latin, means that you are just gluing words together. You are just adding prefixes and suffixes instead of using isolated words. Example, kitablarım da, in my books. As you can see, in English, three separate words are used, while in Turkish, they are all glued to each other. Plural To make a word plural, we add either ler or lar. Which one to use depends on the last vowel of the word. And these are the vowels in Turkish language. For example, the word araba, the a is the last vowel of the word, while in the word okul, the U is the last vowel of this word. Look at the table below to see which suffix should be used to make a word plural. Now it's your turn. Can you make these words plural? You can pause the video if you need more time. Comparative and superlative. By simply adding daha at the beginning of an adjective, you can make it comparative, and by adding n, you can make it superlative. Example Exercise. See if you can make these adjectives comparative and superlative. Pronouns. These are the subject pronouns in Turkish. Ben, sen, o, biz, siz, onlar. In Turkish, when we use the subject pronouns, we should also attach the personal endings for that pronoun. For example, I am a doctor. The personal ending for the pronoun I is this. Because every personal ending is different, so it is possible to omit the subject pronoun and keep the personal endings only. Let's look at another example. Notice how the vowel changed. The reason we use a different vowel is because there is something in Turkish called the vowel harmony. The vowel harmony in phonology is an assimilatory process in which the vowels of a word have to be members of the same class, thus in harmony. The rules are like this.
Let's look at this example. Because the last vowel of this word is E, that's why we have to use IM ending. Let's look at another example. Again, because the last vowel of this word is I, that's why SIN is used. Look at this table to see all the personal endings. The letter Y is used when the last letter of the word is a vowel, and then the personal suffix is also starts with a vowel. The Y works as a buffer between the two vowels. In Turkish language, two vowels should not come after one another. Let's look at the second example. I am a student. As you can see, the last vowel of the word is I, and the personal ending is also I. When we have two vowels after one another, a letter Y should be used between the two vowels. We learned how to say I am a student, I am a doctor. Now to say I am not a student or I am not a doctor, we simply add the word Dale between the word and the personal ending. Example. And because the last vowel of the word Dale is E, and we add all the fixes after the word Dale, so they will always be in the same vowel group. For example, Pronouns of Possession The pronouns of possession are also similar to subject pronouns. When we use them, we should also add the correct endings. Look at this table to see the pronouns of possession and the possible endings. The letters in a parenthesis are used when the last letter is a consonant, and the letters in a square brackets are used when the last letter is a vowel. Let's look at this example, my car. Because the word Araba ends with a vowel, so we only use the letter M. Look at the next example, my book. Because the word book ends with a consonant, so we have to use the word in the parentheses. And here, we only use the word inside the square brackets when the last letter of the word is a vowel. So the letter S works as a buffer between the two vowels. For example, To say I have something in Turkish is very easy. Simply add the word var after the possessive suffix. To say I don't have something, just change the word var to yok. That's all. For example, Look at this example, I have a car. Instead of saying a car, in Turkish, one car is used, since there is no equivalent word for the indefinite article a in Turkish. Asking questions. Earlier, we learned how to say you have or you don't have something by adding var, yok after suffixes. Example, you have a cat. Now to make it a question sentence, we add one of these four words. Which one to use again depends on the last vowel of the word.
Verbs All Turkish verbs in infinitive state end with either mak or mek. For example, gitmek, vermek, konuşmak, yapmak. So the mek or mak indicate that the verb is in infinitive state. To get the root of a verb, just remove the mak or mek at the end of the verb. Present continuous tense. It is very easy to turn a verb into the present continuous form. The your is like the ing in English. Simply add the your after the verb root and then add the personal ending. For example, çalışmak to work. Remove the mac to get to the verb root and then add the your and then the personal ending. As you can see, the only thing that's changing is a vowel in front of the your. The your itself is not affected by the vowel harmony rules. Let's look at a few examples. And you will notice that the only thing that is changing is the first vowel of the tense. To make the present continuous tense negative is super simple. You only have to add the letter M after the verb root. Example. Past tense. We learned how to add present continuous suffix to the root of the verbs. To make a verb into the past tense, we use one of these four words. Now which one to use again depends on the last vowel of the verb. And we learned that based on the last vowel of the verb, the suffix changes. Same thing is true for the past tense. For example, A very important note, if the last letter of the verb root is one of these letters, then the letter D must be changed to letter T. So instead of using these four, we should use these four words. By adding either ma or me, we can negate the past tense verbs. Simply add the ma and me at the end of the verb root. Note, we learned that we have to change the letter D to T if the last letter of the verb root is one of these letters. But in the past tense, when we add the negative ma, me, we don't have to change the last letter. Example. A useful tip to remember all the letters is to memorize these two words Fustik Shahab Meaning the peanut seller Shahab Shahab is a name Fustik means the peanut seller If you look closer you will see that these two words contain all the letters that you must memorize Future tense By now you should have an idea how the Turkish grammar works How by adding a suffix you can change the tense of a verb the future tense is no exception. The suffix for the future tense is acak, ecek. For example, Now is a good time to talk about the consonant mutation. When a vowel suffix is added to a word ending with one of these four letters, the last letter of the word will change into another letter. For example, There are many more useful and important suffixes but we can't talk about all of them in one video. But for now, we will shortly talk about a few of them. If you can remember and master the vowel harmony rules, 
the consonant mutation and the fastikta shahab, then you can easily learn and use all the new suffixes. Thank you for watching the video and subscribe to our Glossika channel to see more videos like this. Also, please tell us in the comment section what language do you want to see next.